rise up to welcome him. Everybody praise the Lord. Somebody may say, go mountain, go. Mountains will get out of your life tonight in Jesus' name. God is about to do a great miracle in your life. Where is he? The Lord will look at you there. Where is she there? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You are the candidate for miracle tonight. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you. We know with you all things are possible. And tonight, you have come to bless your people, to roll their mountains away, and to work miracle in every life. Lord, Confirm the word of power, the word of anointing, and the word of miracle in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Our God is doing great things. Wonderful things all over the world. He's doing it here. He's doing it everywhere. And you will not miss your miracle tonight in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 3, reading from verse 22, it says, Even the righteousness of God, which is by the faith of Jesus Christ, unto all, unto all, and unto you, upon all them that believe for there is no difference and then in verse 23 we're told for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god verse 24 it says being justified freely all have sinned all need justification all need forgiveness all need freedom all need the fulfillment of the mercy of god it says we're justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in christ jesus then in verse 25 whom god has set forth to be a propitiation the atonement or oh, is to be the covering and the cleansing and the removal the redemption of everyone through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of god then in verse 26 it says to declare i say at this time the righteousness that he might be the just might be just and the justifier of him that believeth in Jesus. Him, no discrimination or her, no discrimination, no partiality. Everyone that believes in Jesus. And as you come tonight. And you put your faith, your trust, your confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Forgiveness has come to you. Freedom has come to you. And the fulfillment of the promise of God that cannot fail, that has come to you tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight, I want to talk to you on the fundamental possibilities of the faith of Jesus fundamental that is very important very essential indispensable in your life in every life the fundamental possibilities of the faith of Jesus three things we're looking at tonight number one forgiveness of all sins after repentance and faith forgiveness is fundamental 
fundamental to God, fundamental to you, fundamental in the family, fundamental for the human race, fundamental for everyone. Forgiveness of all sins after repentance and faith. Number two, freedom. Freedom is fundamental. And it's a great possibility that God can set you free. Free from all the consequences of the evil things you had done in the past. Free from all sicknesses and all infirmities. Free. You are free tonight. Freedom from all sicknesses. Recovery through faith. Recovery. You will recover. Your body will recover health. Your life will recover happiness. And your family will recover everything you have lost. A new life, new love will come again in Jesus' name. Number three is the fulfillment of all seekers of relief by faith. The fulfillment of all, for all seekers of relief. You want to be relieved and set free, liberated completely from anything and everything that brings suffering into your life. Fulfillment for all seekers of relief by faith. Look at number one. Number one is forgiveness of all sins. How many sins will God forgive? How many of your sins will God forgive? All your sins. Everyone, the one you did, you did ignorantly. And the one you did deliberately. And the one you did because other people were doing that. Come on. And the one you did in a special way. Oh, come on. God will forgive all your sins. I thought you would say amen. Forgiveness of all sins after repentance and faith. We're told in Acts chapter 5 verse 30. Acts chapter 5 verse 30. God, the God of our fathers, raised up Jesus whom ye slew and hanged on a tree whom ye slew and hanged on a tree ye who are those people number one the Jews that crucified Christ that put him to death whom ye slew and hanged on a tree number two ye that's you if you had not sinned Christ would not have died if you were not a sinner, there would not be a savior. If you didn't do evil, Christ would not have died. Your sin slew him. Your disobedience slew him. Your offensive nature, offensive life to God slew him. He died, so you will not die. He was crucified, so you will not be condemned. He took your sin with him. The punishment of your sin, the pressure of your sin, the evil of your sin, the consequence of your sin. He took that upon him. It was your sin that slew him. It was your sin that crucified him whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Verse 31 The beauty of the gospel, the glory of the, of the grace of God. Him as God exalted. Him, not them. Christ and prophets, not them. Christ and another person, not them. Him. The only one that is the source of forgiveness. The only one that is the source of salvation. Him as God exalted. Look at this. If a man is exalted by people. 
And then another one cries, exalted by God. The one exalted by man holds no authority. If angels exalt anyone and God exalts another one, the, op the upliftment, exaltation by those angels, they mean nothing. If religion, your own religion exalts a man and then God, the God of heaven exalts him. The one exalted by religion, my religion, your religion. The religion of native people, local people, international people amounts to nothing when you compare the exaltation by God and God alone. God has exalted Christ to be your savior. I said God has exalted Christ to be your savior. He says him as God exalted with his right hand. With his right hand to be a prince and a savior. Look at this. But to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. He actually causes you to repent. It leads your mind, it influences your mind to say, My sin crucified Christ, my sin nailed him on the cross, and the Holy Ghost gives you sorrow for your sin, regret for your sin, repentance of your sin, and then the Holy Ghost draws your heart, is doing it tonight, is drawing you unto the Heavenly Father. You're welcome. You will not resist the call, the pull, the drawing of the Holy Spirit unto the Father, because God has exalted him Christ to be a prince and a savior and to give you repentance and forgiveness of sins tonight as you come to the Lord through Jesus Christ he will forgive you he will blot out all the sins you ever committed in your life look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 17 and I'm reading from verse 30 in Acts chapter 17 and we're looking at verse 30 it says and the times of this ignorance God winged at the time of ignorance God Winked at. What does that mean? Did you have you heard Jesus was on the cross? And then as he looked at the people there, and he looked at the people here, he saw the people at that time. He saw the people at this time. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Those words, no, not, means we're ignorant. We didn't understand what we're doing. We didn't understand that everything we plant will grow and will reap. We didn't understand that the evil words, evil action, evil behavior we sow will make us reap punishment all through eternity. And he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's why it says now, and the times of this ignorance, God went at everything you've done. You didn't know the cost of what you are doing. You didn't know the consequence of what you are sowing. You didn't know the result for you, for your family, for the people around you and the result of everything you saw in eternity at, at this time of ignorance God went out but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent the Lord is saying 
will settle the past, everything you've done in the past. You did it in ignorance. You didn't understand that what you were doing will bring punishment and judgment all throughout eternity. And God says, because of Christ, because of the one I have exalted to be the prince and the savior, I'm going to forgive you. Say amen. I'm going to overlook everything that you've done in the past, but now he commanded all men everywhere to repent. That means to turn around and to say, I said that in ignorance before. I can't claim ignorance again. I turn around. I did that evil. In ignorance before, I cannot claim ignorance anymore. Lord, I repent. I didn't know that the things I was doing will cause Christ, the only begotten Son of God, to be crucified on the cross of Calvary. Now I know and I repent. Now he commands all men everywhere. To do what? I said to do what? Look at your neighbor and tell him, tell her to do what? That's what you are going to do tonight. And as you do that tonight, forgiveness will come to you. Salvation will come to you. A new life will come to you. A new power and the grace of God will come into your life in Jesus' name. Okay, what if I don't repent? What if I go on doing what I've always done, even though I'm not ignorant anymore? I know that my sin crucified Christ. What if I don't repent? Look at verse 31. In verse 31, because he commands every man everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. He will judge everyone in the world because of their sins, because they have not repented. He will say, you heard that your sin your evil, your transgression nailed me on the cross. After you heard that, you refused to repent and you kept on doing the things that nails me afresh to the cross. You gave me pain, the pain of crucifixion. And I said, I'll overlook that. I'll forgive you. And that, but now you shall repent. And you say, no, I'll keep on driving the nail into the hand and driving the spear into the side of Christ. He will then judge on the final day. I pray you'll not wait till the day of judgment. Forgiveness is available today. And salvation is available today. Because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men. Has given assurance unto all men that anyone, everyone that calls on the name of the Lord will be forgiven, will be saved in that he has raised him from the dead. Praise the Lord, salvation is coming to you today. Praise the Lord that forgiveness is coming to you today. And then every sin you ever committed in your life, God will blot everything away. There's another thing here. Number one, we talk of forgiveness. Number two, we're talking about freedom. Number two now. Number two, freedom from all sicknesses. 
How many sicknesses will the Lord heal today? I'm talking to you. How many of your trouble, of your mountains, of your difficulties, of your deformity, of your disease, of your sicknesses, of all the attacks and affliction, how many will he remove today? <laughs> Praise the Lord. He will set you free. And you will recover through faith. You will recover through faith. I will recover. I will recover. Your blind eyes will open. Your lame, weak, paralyzed legs will get strength. You'll rise up today. You'll be healed in Jesus' name. Look at Mark chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 46. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. And he came to Jericho. Now we come to you wherever you are christ is coming to you you are there over the radio over the television christ is coming to you You are there online in any country christ is coming to you right now who's going to receive christ today amen, amen. when a great visitor an august visitor a most respected visitor who should have told you come but instead of telling you come he comes to you and he knocks at your door and inside you say who is there he said it's honorable so and so and then you don't answer anymore you sit down there you didn't open the door You've done, apart from everything you've done before, you have added salt to the injury. That's more painful. But when he comes and you say, who is there? And he says, I'm honorable so and so. And very quickly, you get up and you open the door and you receive him. Great national blessings will come upon your life. Now, when Christ, the most honored, the most exalted, and the most recognized in heaven and on earth, when he comes and he knocks at your door, remember, this is the savior, this is the killer, this is the deliverer, this is the redeemer. And he comes and knocks at your door. If you don't open the door and you kind of shun him, stab him, you give him a painful blow because you are not going to open the door. It's going to be the consequence of that. He'll say on the final day, I came to you. I wanted to offer you forgiveness and freedom. And yet, you didn't open the door. You, you shunned me. You told me to go away. Now, he is the judge of all the earth. There will be terrible consequence. But... When he comes, the exalted one, the honored one, and the most recognized in heaven and on earth, and the mighty, powerful one, his name is Jesus. When he knocks at your door and he wants to give you your freedom from all sicknesses, when you open the door, you honor him, heavenly blessings will come upon your life. Verse 46, and they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the wayside begging blind. 
He was blind physically. He was blind spiritually. He was blind professionally. He was blind in every way. He couldn't see. He couldn't see the future. He couldn't see, his he couldn't see the provision of the Lord. And he couldn't even see what other people ordinarily were seeing. And they were told in verse 47, verse 47, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, then we're told he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Mercy has come. Yeah. Have mercy on me. I said mercy has come. Yeah. You know the people that have problem. And they come to this great, great gathering like this. And they should have the freedom. They come on the basis of marriage. Marriage. God, I am so and so. I'm a good man. I'm a generous man. I'm a plain man. I am a religious man. And because of who I am, because of what I have done, on the basis of my marriage, I need freedom. Heaven will look away. Didn't you remember? Don't you remember? All have sinned. Good men, generous men, plain men, religious men and women, all have sinned. We have no marriage. All we can ask for is the mercy of God. And the man knew that. He said, have mercy on me. As you come tonight, and you're not relying on your marriage, on what I have done, on where I have been, on many lives I have held. No, you come for the mercy of God. The Lord will set you free. Look at verse 48. In verse 48, and many charged him that he should hold his peace. Who are those people? The people that walk on marriage. Hey, come on. You're blind. You have not paid your religious due. You have not fasted. You have not come to the synagogue. You have not come to the assembly. And you, your name is not known in the book of who is who. They were claiming marriage, but they got nothing. They got nothing. They were not forgiven. They were not saved. And the man was more intelligent than they were. He said, you think I should keep quiet because I have no marriage? I don't come on the basis of marriage. I come on the basis of mercy. You come for mercy tonight. I said you come for mercy tonight. And the Lord will set you free. But you cried the more a great deal that son of David have mercy on me he didn't change his prayer he didn't change his attitude okay they're stopping me they tell me to keep quiet because I have no marriage and then try to cook out something even though I'm blind I have marriage even though I cannot see I have marriage do you think because a man is blind he doesn't have marriage he knew that whether you are blind or you are not blind, whether you are lame or you are not lame, whether you are sick or you are not sick, whether you have a challenge, physical challenge or not, all have sinned. 
Nobody has marriage. All you can have, you have by the mercy of God. He shouted out loud again, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Your day of mercy has come. In verse 49, it says, And Jesus stood still. Jesus stood still. He came for people who know that they are not qualified for any good thing, that only mercy can save them. Because of that, he stood still and he commanded him to be called. And he called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And tonight I come to declare to you, be of good comfort, cheer up your problems will be dealt with by jesus christ cheer up your guilt will be taken away by jesus christ cheer up your sickness will be carried away by jesus christ be of good comfort he calls thee rise he called me, verse 50, in verse 50, and he casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. You see, those blind people, those days, they wore a kind of garment, so that when people see them, what do you say? That's a blind man. If he doesn't come out of the road, they'll take another place and avoid hitting him. We do that today. When somebody is on the road, especially in the night, he wears a kind of dress overall that when a car is coming and that car shines the light on the dress or oh, they'll say that man is to be protected we must not hit him and they will avoid hitting him and so he knows i've been in the assembly in the gang in the group of blind people and we identify ourselves by the kind of dress we wear and i'm going to jesus the sight giver the freedom giver the mercy giver i'm going to jesus and once i get to him i'll be blind no more I want you to come to Christ tonight, you are blind no more. Once you come to Christ tonight, you are weak no more. Once you come to Christ tonight, it will change your life. And what he did was a form of repentance, turning around. I am not in the assembly, in the gang, in the group of blind people anymore, and the badge of identification that identified him with blindness he took up and he cast that away the badge of sinfulness that associated you with sinners with transgressors with dark people with evil people as you come to christ tonight you remove that garment and that badge you throw it away. Forgiveness has come for you. Freedom has come for you. And then in verse 51, it says in verse 51, And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, Lord, he called him Lord. He made him the Lord, the director of his life. I call you Lord. I surrender my heart. I surrender my life unto you. Now, the chairman of the board of the blind will not be my director 
anymore. The one, the God of this world that directs the people, he has blindfolded, will not be my director anymore. And the society that will be saying, go this way, go this way, go that way, and walk by the idolatry of the land, they will not direct me anymore. I call you now my Lord. He'll be your Lord tonight. Amen. Your director tonight. Your redeemer tonight. And the one that will lead you. He leads me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Final verse there, verse 52. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith has made thee whole. Anybody believe in Christ tonight? Having faith in Christ tonight? As your Savior? As your Lord? As your Redeemer? As the one that died for you on the cross of Calvary? Anybody there? Your faith? Has made you whole. Yeah. And immediately he received the sight and followed Jesus in the way. And followed Jesus in the way. What does that mean? Anywhere Jesus was going, he followed Jesus in the way. Jesus does not go the way of darkness. So, you are not going to darkness anymore. Jesus was not going in the way of drunkenness. And so, he will not follow into drunkenness. Jesus was not going in the way of transgression. In the way of transgressors. And he followed Jesus in the way. Actually, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's following Jesus now in the path of life eternal. He followed Jesus in the way. As you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, now you follow Jesus in the way. I will follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, no turning back, no turning back. All my sins that I'd done before behind me, and the cross, and Christ, and Calvary, and conversion before me, no turning back, no turning back. Praise the Lord, tonight is your night. You get forgiveness, number one. You get freedom, number two. Number three, you get fulfillment. Come to number three here. Fulfillment for all seekers of relief by faith. Fulfillment. Fulfillment has come in your life. Praise the Lord. Trust in the Lord tonight. All your prayers will be answered. As we are seeking forgiveness. And seeking freedom. And seeking relief by faith. Fulfillment has come to you tonight. He got it. You will get it. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 16. In Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 16, here it says, When the even evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the evil spirits with his word, and healed all that was sick. How many that was sick? Oh. How many did he heal? Oh. Who is the next one? You'll be the next one. Yeah. Why? Why did he heal them? Because 
They married it. Uh -uh. No marriage. Look at verse 17. It says that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses. It will take all your sicknesses away. All your sins away. And then in exchange, it will give you salvation. Remember? It's a great exchange. If you allow him to take your sins away and you hand over your sins unto him, he'll say, don't go. I hand over to you my salvation. If you give your sickness to him, you say, don't go, I'll give you my healing, soundness, perfect health. If you give your trouble unto him, or your transgressions unto him, it will give you his triumphant truth. And today, you'll be more than a conqueror. Are you ready? Forgiveness, number one. Freedom, number two. Fulfillment, number three. Not by marriage, by the mercy of God. The times of ignorance, the Lord went at. He passes over. But now commands all men everywhere to repent. And forgiveness will come to you. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You're coming for the mercy of God. You realize what you've done? That it was your sin, your evil, your behavior that nailed him to the cross. And now he says, I'm willing to forgive you. I'm willing to overlook every bad and evil thing that you have done. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. I'm asking for mercy. Raise up your hand. I'm asking for forgiveness. Raise up your hand. I'm asking for the salvation of God. Raise up your hand. I have no marriage. I'm a bad person. I'm a sinful person. I think, I, I used to think I was good, but I know all I've seen that come short of the glory of God. I want the mercy of God. Raise up that hand. Praise the Lord. The Lord has seen you there. And the Lord will forgive every sin you ever committed in Jesus' name. As you're raising up your hand, please stand up where you are. In your home, where you are, stand up there. Anywhere in the prison, stand up there. Over the radio, stand up there. On television, you are hearing the message, stand up there. Online, anywhere, stand up right there. You want forgiveness, you want salvation. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Turn away from that sin. Say, Lord, I am sorry. Say, Lord, I come for salvation, forgiveness. On the basis of your mercy. Keep on standing. And pray with you. Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Lord. Father. That you sent him. To be our savior. And our lord. And we know. Everything he did on Calvary. Is for everyone. Standing. Everyone request for forgiveness. And salvation in your mercy, in your love, in your grace. Forgive everyone in Jesus' name. I pray the Spirit of God will be a witness in your heart that the Father, on the basis of what Christ has done, has forgiven you now. All your sins are wiped away. The condemnation is taken away. The punishment eternal that should have come upon you, everything is taken away. By the declaration of his word, you are forgiven. You are saved. 
and the joy of salvation will be given to you by the Holy Ghost right now. Thank you, Lord, for that forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for that freedom. Thank you, Lord, for that salvation. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Keep on standing. Huh? The mercy of God has reached you. You're saved. You're born again. Our counselors will come right there and they'll give you the sleep to feel so that we can associate with you in your new found salvation and faith in Christ. After that, I'll come back to pray for those who are sick tonight. Miracles of healing everywhere. The pastor, please. This is a great time. This is a great hour. This is the time the Lord has made. And I know you've just given your life to Christ. You've accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Whether you're on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, or even on Zoom. And right now, the pastor has prayed and has led us to Christ. If you have given your life to Christ, everyone is celebrating as we here are also celebrating. You want to go on gckhq.org forward slash connect. You will see the link very soon on your screen. gckhq.org forward slash connect. This is the page where you need to share your details because the man of God and the entire GCK team will be there to encourage you, to motivate you, and to lead you in the way of the Lord. The Lord wants you to connect with us. This is a special GCK celebration service. And it is a privilege that you have been led. You are now joint heirs in the kingdom. So don't forget, go online, gckhq.org forward slash connect. And put in your details, and the Lord will do you good. Thank you for joining. The man of God will soon be here. And it would be here to give us the miracle prayer. You don't want to miss it. This is a special GCK, the gospel to every creature. Bye-bye for now. As we heard this message, you believe the word of the Lord. You are now a child of God. So be happy as you are giving your details to the counselors around you. Let's quickly hurry up, counselors. Let's get their details so that we can now engage in the miraculous prayer for tonight. You that is not uh, really having time today to maybe be born again, prepare your heart. As the message is going on, the prayer is going on. Holy Spirit is working on you. So quickly, Call the counselors around you and say you are ready to give your life to Jesus. Prayer have gone on already for your forgiveness. So the Lord is waiting for you. Others, begin to pray. Ask God and prepare your heart for your miracle. Prepare your faith. Cry for the mercy. We saw blind Bartenomos. He cried. There were obstacles on the way. Hindrances by people around, yet he forged forward. He prayed through. So it's a moment for your prayers. Pray and say, Lord, I will receive my miracle tonight. All over the globe. Are you in African countries? In the Europe? Are you in UK? America? Are you in Asia? Australia? In the Saudi Arabia? Everywhere you are in the globe. Is a moment for miracle. Pray and seek the face of the Lord as we are celebrating two years of God's visitation, God's miracle, God's outpouring, God's wonders. Tonight will not be exempted. Pray and say, Lord, I'm here for my own. All counselors, we are waiting for you in hall two. Are we true? Wave your hands if you are true with the counseling. Okay, let's quickly do quick. Do quick. 
out of all three. If you are finished, can you wave me? Okay, let's quickly do quick. All four. Go on. Okay, all four has finished. Out of all five, if you are finished, counselor, wave me there. Okay, quickly, please. All five. Anyone? Okay, quickly. We are waiting for you. The pastor is waiting to launch the miraculous prayer. Power pack prayer that save the sick, that will heal the sick, deliver the captive, and do wonders in your life. You will not carry that problem home. There is miracle of mercy for everyone tonight. So pray and get ready. Counselors, quickly please. Hold two. Are you true? Thank you. Out of all three. Okay, thank you. All four. Quick, quick. Counselors, quickly in hall four. All five has done already. All six, quickly now, handle them as fast as possible. Thank you, thank you. Amen. Are you ready now? As the pastor is ready, stand up for your miraculous prayer. Divine visitation tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. I said, Praise the Lord. Amen. Your freedom, your recovery, Amen. your healing, Amen. your miracle has now come. Amen. Raise up that hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Don't wait for me to mention the problem. You mention the problem yourself. Tell the Lord. The man said that I might receive my sight. Whatever sickness you have, whatever miracle you need, tell the Lord that I might receive my healing. That my limb legs may have strength that my blind eyes might open, that the earlier might vanish away, that the swelling might vanish away, that the miracle of being able to stand erect with all the waste pain gone, that that might happen, that my brain problem might vanish away. Whatever the problem, resolve that hand now, and as we mentioned the name of Jesus and you hear the final Amen your miracle has arrived are you ready? Father we thank you and bless your name we thank you because we know you love everyone Christ Jesus you died on the cross to save us to set us free and to heal every sickness in our bodies and therefore lord i present everyone before you whatever infirmity whatever disease whatever ailment touch them heal them in jesus name everyone everywhere that that divine healing miracle walking power will come upon everyone right now set them free relieve them of every pain take those incurable diseases away I pray that the mountain of incurable infirmity that have been there for a long time, mountain, I command you, get out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray upon everyone to the right, to the left, at the back, in the front, on this ground, anyone that is sick, 
online, over the television, over the radio, everywhere, bring healing to everyone now. Deliverance to everyone now. Miracle power upon everyone now. Lord, confirm it. It is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. The Lord has done it. Check up, check up, check up. The cancer, the tuberculosis, the evil thing, and that plague is gone right now. We've mentioned the name of Jesus. That name is above every name. You are healed, delivered in Jesus' name. Yeah.